This week on the Husky Update. October is over, but the Halloween spirit on campus and around Boston was strong this year. We have citywide coverage of the fall celebration. An NUTV investigation looks at what happens if someone steals your Husky card. Our correspondents go undercover to tell you the facts. And the dance studio in Curry is overbooked. Your campus. Your news. All the time. From the Showman Studio, here is the Husky Update. I'm Caitlin Bedayan and welcome to this edition of the Husky Update. We are back in the Shillman studio and excited to bring you the latest Northeastern news. We begin with a follow-up on last week's story about dance clubs on campus. Elisa has the details. Hi, I'm Elisa from NUTV News and I'm here with the two co-captains of the Ballroom Dance Club today and I'm going to ask them a few questions about rehearsing, about finding space on campus to rehearse. Do you usually encounter difficulties when trying to find space to rehearse on campus? For one thing, there are only two dance studios in the school where we can go to practice, so um, that's not enough space for everyone. Northeastern is trying to accommodate everyone and like trying to give everyone equal uh, space, but either way, we practice usually about 15 hours a week, and not e every team can have 15 hours a week, so we have to go find other space because Northeastern is trying to give everyone the same amount of time. We, we are aware that this is an issue, and I think it'd be great if Northeastern can expand um, um, spaces for um, dance crews um, on campus so that we don't have to fight for um, spaces or have to, you know, um, resettle for t times that are inconvenient for us. Thanks, Elisa. Now, correspondent Amir is in studio with a story about the controversy between music industry students and the music department. Amir? Thanks, Caitlin. The music industry program has had a bit of a rough patch this semester. Several professors left and far less electives are offered. Some students saw this as a university way of downsizing the program to eventually kill it off. A petition was created and signed by students. It addressed these points as well as general grievances like a lack of practice space for musicians. On October 19th, the music program held a town hall about the program to help ease the tension. The department explained that the university was not trying to downsize the program and the professors resigning or retiring at the same time was just a coincidence that led to the decrease in the amount of electives offered. They plan on hiring temporary professors for next semester before they hire permanent replacements. Overall, the town hall was a good dialogue between the music students and the music department. Thanks, Amir. An electronic music show was performed by Zed in House of Blues Boston on October 17th and 18th. The show was enjoyed by a large audience. Initially, Boston was not included in his world tour schedule, but he added the stop in July. Zed is a famous DJ and tickets sold out very fast. He played almost all of his famous music, such as Stay, Beautiful Now, Clarity, and Let Me Love You. October 25th was Diwali, or Dipawali, which is one of India's biggest and most important holidays of the year. The meaning of the word is Rose of Light, which is why many people call it the Festival of Lights. On Diwali, Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, and Jains followers light a dia with family and friends. The Museum of Fine Arts celebrated this event by bringing lively music and dance performances. The dance piece you see is one of the Indian classical dances. Now here is Yej with Rapid Fire. Hi, this is Yej from Rapid Fire. Parents and Family Weekend ran from October 27th to the 29th. Events included welcomes from the colleges, an ice hockey game, and a performance by local comedians Tony V and Sean Sullivan. Students from across campus stripped down on October 20th for Northeastern's 12th annual underwear run. Participants completed a loop around the campus and a dash through the Prudential Center wearing nothing but the bare essentials. A strike put on by Unite here at Local 26, the union representing Northeastern's dining hall workers, was averted when contractor Chartwells capitulated to the union's demands just a day before the strike was to start. Workers gained increased wages, more affordable health care, and a pension plan. And finally, strong winds on October 30th resulted in some damage to the university, including broken windows at the Fenway Center and fallen debris at East Village. Those were the rapid-fire highlights of the week. Next up is Marcus reporting on Pumpkin Palooza, one of October's many seasonal celebrations. He is in the studio with us now. An event called Pumpkin Palooza was held on 420 D Street, otherwise known as Long on D. Just prior to Halloween, hundreds of people attended with their costumes and pumpkins. There was a concert, food, cornhole, 
building blocks and swings. Another pumpkin palooza was held on campus the following day. RSA and whole councils provided hundreds of pumpkins for students to carve. They also had music, a barbecue, and fried dough. Thanks, Marcus. Another Halloween-themed event was held a few weeks ago at the Boston Common. Take a look. Hey everyone, this is Nikki reporting for NETV News and we are here over at the Froth Pond in Boston Commons. We're covering the pumpkin float. The people bring their carved pumpkins, put a candle in them, and then float them on the frog pond. There are also a whole bunch of booths full of games and a whole bunch of little kids in their costumes. Alright guys, this is the scariest thing yet. A rain on Halloween. Alright, you're excited for Halloween? Very excited. Are you guys excited for Halloween? Yeah. 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 <laughs> And that is it for the pumpkin float over at the Boston Frog Pond. Back to you at the studio. In other Halloween news, NUTV held a screening and costume party to celebrate the holiday. Here's reporter Amir on the scene with some of the best costumes we found. Hi, this is Amir and I'm here at the NUTV Spooky and Spine Tingling Movie Screening. Today we're going to be talking to some people about their costumes. Okay, can you tell me about your costume today? Well, I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm a nun. Sister Margaret, to be exact. Hello, I'm Winnie the Pooh, and I brought along my best friend Tigger. He loves these things. Why is that good? They don't have any honey here, though. That makes me really sad. I was running late from my dance practice, and I didn't have a costume, so I stopped in the NUTV office, and I grabbed a hat. I am the one and only clown of Prince of Crime, Joker. I am Hester Prynne from Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter. Um, I actually inspired by this t-shirt, which I got when I went to Nathaniel Hawthorne's birthplace with my mother and two other menopausal high school teachers. <laughs> it was quite the time, and suffice it to say, I had to wear it. So, happy Halloween. Thanks, Amir. Comment on this video with your Halloween stories, and you could be featured in a future Husky update. We now head to NUTV Sports for their update. Hi, I'm Liv with your NUTV Sports update. The Northeastern men's hockey team will be without one of their best players, arguably one of the best in the nation, against two of Hockey East's top teams this weekend. Senior forward Dylan Sakura will be joining Team Canada in the Carhalla Cup, a pre-Olympic tune-up tournament featuring several European teams. Sakura joins Zach Whitecloud of Bemidji State as the only two NCAA athletes to participate in this year's Canadian group. The rest of the roster will be made up of professional athletes, most of which played in the NHL before leaving for Europe. Fernie Flamen men's hockey head coach Jim Madigan said he's thrilled Sakura will get this opportunity. He added he has worked hard over the past few years to become one of the top overall players in college hockey, and being named to Team Canada is a testament to his work on and off the ice. Sakura has never competed in an international tournament before, but Hockey Canada has been keeping their eye on him. With the NHL refusing to allow their players to compete in the 2018 Olympic Games, some NCAA athletes such as Sakura will get to use these pre-Olympic tournaments to compete for a roster spot in Pyeongchang. Sakura was named Hockey East Player of the Month in October for his 14-point start to the season. He'll be missing the homecoming game against BU and the following night's game against UMass Lowell at the Songa Center, but NU's loss is sure to be Canada's game. Back to you in the studio. Thank you to the NUTV Sports Department for all of their continued coverage. Our next story takes place in After Hours, where an acting group performed a sketch comedy show. Corey Doxer has more. Hi, this is Corey Doxer reporting from After Hours at the Curry Student Center. What club are you guys representing? Um, acting Out, which is one of the theater groups on campus. What role are you playing tonight? I'm actually playing a couple of roles tonight. One of them is uh, a news anchor, and the other one you'll see on stage. It's pretty interesting. Both of them are really different characters. There's six actors, and then there's two directors, and two writers that contributed. It's called Wednesday Night Live, so because it's a Wednesday, but it's the Saturday Night Live type skit. The time is pretty important because, well, firstly, it's to have fun, but at the same time, there's a lot to learn. Oh, the, oh, Wednesday Night Live is, we're going to talk about, like, different events that are happening on a daily basis, there's recent events that have happened, and also uh, SGA has a really big project coming up, so we're going to uh, talk about that as well. Thanks, Corey. And thanks to all the student performers who showcase their talents. There are many student performances coming up in the month of November. Make sure you check some of them out. In other news, here is Dima reporting on Boston's annual book festival. Hi, this is Dima from Boston Book Festival celebrating their ninth year. We have a lot of coverage today for children books and stages and authors and everything. Passport 
pro program is for children. So they go around to each one of the little tents and they get a stamp. And when they finish getting stamps and all the blocks, then they get a free book. Everything about it. Yeah, mostly the bagels. What do you like about the book fair? I like to get books. How long have you been coming to the Boston Pub Book Festival? Yeah, the uh, IPNI has, or Independent Publishers of New England, <laughs> IPNI, has been coming for eight years. Behind me, a really cool concert. It's no more than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. Have you ever wondered what would happen if someone stole your Husky card? Our final story today looks at that possibility. Here is our NUTV investigation. I'm Scott Adelberg for an NUTV investigation into what happens if your Husky card was stolen. We went undercover to see what would happen if someone tried to use my Husky card to get into my dorm, to Wollaston's, and other places on campus. Let's take a look. As you can see in this video, we went undercover into On The Go in the Curry Student Center to discover what would happen when buying cookies. What we found out was that we were able to buy the cookies because nobody was checking whose name was on the card. We found that the same thing was happening in the Wollaston's at the Marino Center when we tried to buy bananas. You can see at the second register here that nobody was checking whose name and face was on the Husky card and that one of our correspondents was able to make a purchase while using my Husky card. Another concerning aspect of this is that we went to go and print something. For example, if I was trying to print a transcript for an interview, you would find that my NUID was at the very top of it. If somebody stole my Husky card, they would be able to have access to my NUID and all of my other personal information at the university. The same goes for any academic building on campus. If you need to be signed into a place like the library, you can swipe right in without anybody checking using your or someone else's Husky card. One of the most shocking developments that we found was that when we sent an NUTV correspondent in with my Husky card to try and sign into my dorm, they were able to be let right in by the proctor with nobody asking any questions. You can see in the video here that the proctor takes the ID card, swipes it, and then doesn't even look at the picture or name on the card. As you can see from our investigation, it's very easy to have identity theft on campus. If your Husky card is stolen, people can use your Husky dollars, can get into your dorm, and can do anything with your identity. For NUTV Investigations, I'm Scott Adelberg. Back to you in the studio. If your card was stolen or you know someone who had a Husky card stolen, contact Husky Card Services in Spear Hall. We now go back to Dima, who will be hosting our homecoming special next week to look ahead. Dima? Thanks, Kaylin. Homecoming is nearing. It's from November 5th to 12th. The week will be filled with spirit events, free giveaways, and homecoming headliner James Corden. We will be providing a lot of great coverage. Until next week, back to you. Thanks, Dima. That's it for this episode of the Husky Update. I'm Caitlin. Thanks for watching and see you next week.